A7 is the full-frame flagship of Sony's mirrorless camera line. This is the A7 II, the mama bear of the lineup. The A7 family includes the A7R for resolution, 36 megapixels, and the A7S for sensitivity with an unbelievable ISO range and optimized for video. This is the second generation of the base model. Looking at the A7 specifications, all my ideal camera requirements are covered. It's relatively small and reasonably light with a full-size 35mm sensor, viewfinder, good size grip, lots of customizable external controls, full manual as well as great autofocus and exposure, saves 14-bit RAW, high quality video with live HDMI output for monitoring and recording, interchangeable lenses with a good selection of high quality E-mount lenses from various manufacturers, as well as adapters for just about every other lens type. There are a wide range of accessories, flashes, mics and audio adapters, battery grip and a larger monitor. As well as a robust and innovative set of leading edge functions and features. In addition to the growing set of downloadable apps including time lapse, extending the functionality beyond the standard firmware. The main attraction here, as it was with the original A7, is the 24 megapixel full frame sensor in a reasonably priced package. Purists and DSLR snobs will balk at the mirrorless design and the lack of an optical viewfinder, but for me the advantages, compact size and weight, the ability to see the impact of changing settings, and use the viewfinder for video, outweigh the nostalgic appeal. The new headline feature is 5-axis stabilization, I'll get to that in a minute. The A7 design is somewhat utilitarian, slightly larger but mostly unchanged from the previous generation. On off, shutter, aperture and EV dials all easily adjusted by my right hand while my right eye is in the viewfinder. A 10 position mode dial with two custom positions as well as auto, scene, movie and panorama. The body weighs 560 grams. The electronic viewfinder has 2.4 million dots, the LCD 1.2 million. I like the centered over the lens viewfinder and somehow my nose doesn't hit the LCD when I'm using it. The viewfinder is big, with a large eyepiece, and bright and detailed. In dark situations that's an advantage over optical. The LCD tilts up and out 90 degrees, out so that the eyepiece cap doesn't obscure the top of the image, down 45 degrees, even when mounted on a tripod. And it fits solidly into the body. Sony provides a sunlight mode to use outside, handy. The A7 II looks nicely engineered, feels solidly manufactured, good size hand grip with a thumb rest on the back, controls and ports are high quality, but the EV and mode dials are nicer than the rest. The front and back dials are more traditional than on its siblings. I like the dedicated side door for the memory card, not blocked when it's on a tripod. One thing. This smallish switch, which assigns this button to focus or exposure lock, is plasticky. In fact, on my review unit, it no longer worked and was stuck in AEL mode. That shouldn't happen. I got used to the layout fairly quickly, making the adjustments I need in manual mode without taking my eye from the viewfinder. The dual function control dial still sometimes switches modes unexpectedly. But the control dial, along with the front and rear dials, can now be locked using setup menu page 7. Then press the FN button until press again to unlock. The ports on the other side for audio, HDMI and multi-USB are solid but the covers are awkward to open and close. No onboard flash. Up to now, E-mounts have had a very slight wobble. This new metal mount is considerably more solid. The A7 II has a mechanical shutter with both a back and front curtain with a fairly noticeable double click. You can reduce the noise to a single click by using an electronic front curtain. Use the audio signal setting to suppress all sounds, like focus confirm, but not the shutter. There's no silent shooting mode like the A7S. There are two memory positions to save a set of preferred settings. Four pages of settings are included. Up to four more settings can be saved and stored on a memory card. You'll find them saved in the private Sony setting folder if you want to back them up on your computer or move them from one card to another. This is extremely useful for picture profiles and I'll get to that in a minute. Now, let's exercise some creativity by setting creative style to black and white. 
Okay. We'll use the 35 millimeter prime, set the ISO to 100, manual exposure, manual focus. LCD and auto review off, but I have live view display in the viewfinder and full mechanical shutter for a nice loud click. I'm going to save these settings in memory. Glasses off and adjust the viewfinder's diopter to my prescription. With this lens, the ring sets the aperture. You can turn the clicks on or off, then adjust the shutter speed using the back dial. I'm feeling pretty old school. With these settings, of course, you slow down a bit to check the light meter, adjust the shutter speed or aperture and focus with an assist from the expanded view. Looks nice and crisp on the viewfinder screen, all of which seems natural and comfortable and provides the time to carefully judge the image. Texture is revealed in black and white, so focus is crucial. I certainly appreciate that while expanded manual focus is on, the expanded point can be moved with the front and back dials. Aesthetically, I feel like a better photographer when the camera is in manual. Manual control on the a7 II is a pleasant experience, as it should be in a camera in this category. Let's go back to color. Incidentally, if you shoot in RAW plus mode, you have both a black and white JPEG image and a color RAW file. Best of both worlds. Doing a black and white photo walk, I see the battery drains quickly. I don't know if there's something you can turn off to improve it, but you'll want more than one extra battery to get you through a day. The a7 II supports back focus, which can be assigned to several custom buttons. I prefer to have it under my thumb, so I use the smaller than usual AEL button for AF on. Then disable autofocus on the shutter. I set custom 2 to focus settings to get the focus spot selection and adjustment quickly. Press, turn the dial to select the size or another mode, front, up and down, back for back and forth. Delete to center. Focus is impressively fast and accurate. Use continuous and wide to track objects. Face detection with registered faces. Uh, I've seen better implementations of this. Eye detection for even greater accuracy, particularly if your model isn't facing the camera directly. And lock on autofocus. Capture the subject, and it's followed as long as you hold down the back focus or shutter button. Several ways to get to this. Set a custom button, I'm using the center of the control dial, or select from the focus menu in the FN menu. Focus is fast, getting some great candid street portraits, but it occasionally misses the mark. ISO can be set from 50 to 25.6K. Under 100 results in a lower dynamic range. Auto is available in all exposure modes, including manual. Multi-frame ISO, available only in JPEG, combines three shots from a single shutter release into a lower noise image. ISO is very clean, up to 6400. At 12.8, well-lit areas are fine, dark areas are somewhat grainy, and although 25.6 is clearly noisy, the results are impressive and easily improved in post to acceptable, particularly for smaller size prints or web. The EV dial adjusts shutter in P and A modes, iris in S, and is disabled in manual. Camera menu page 4 can also set the EV, and on setup menu page 6, select the front or rear dial to adjust the EV. That doesn't take the EV dial out of commission. Maybe it's me, but I rarely use the EV dial. I'd prefer to have an ISO dial. Maybe selectable in the setup menu or a button on top to switch from one mode to the other? And suddenly, there are no shortage of excellent full-frame Sony and Sony Zeiss lenses. Don't take my word for it. Reviews on even the most reputable sites are giving these lenses high marks. In addition to the 24 to 70, I was able to try out the 70 to 200, the 35 mm 1.4, and the 28mm f.2, along with the wide and fisheye converters. Let's start with the 28mm. It's the smallest, and at 200 grams, the lightest of this set. f2 to 22, minimum focus 29 centimeters. 49mm filter diameter, pretty bouquet. The 28mm angle of view is 75 degrees. The ultra-wide 0.75 adapter reduces the aperture marginally to f2.8 and increases the field of view to 68 degrees, equivalent to 21 millimeters. Which seems like the ideal opportunity to try out some HDR images using the a7II's extensive auto bracket functionality. I'm using the 5 image 2 stop mode. The available bracket options range from 1 3rd stop to 3 stops with 3 or 5 images. That should give you lots to expand the dynamic range. 
it's likely more than is needed for most scenes. For HDR, a tripod is a must-have. Make sure there's nothing moving in the image, which is harder than you think. And set everything in manual, focus, ISO, white balance and aperture, changing only the shutter speed. I used Lightroom's Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop using the more saturated preset. Of course, the a7 II also has Auto HDR and HDR painting modes for similar effects. Nice to have options. With the fisheye, the largest aperture is f3.5, a 16mm equivalent 105 degree view. I know it's distorted, but I really love this effect for all kinds of images. Lightroom's lens profile can straighten it out at the cost of some sharpness. The Sony Zeiss Full Frame 24-70 lens. At 426 grams, it feels fully portable for a day's vacation walkabout. Might like a slightly longer zoom, but it's a very practical lens, excellent for a wide variety of images from portraits to landscape. Most of the pictures in this review were taken with this lens. Maximum aperture is f4, across the zoom range closest to f22. Closest focus is 40 centimeters. That's close enough for some nice shots of tulips at Ottawa's Tulip Festival. Filter diameter is 67 millimeters. Note that this is not the full frame 28 to 70, which is available as a kit lens. Sony's other E-series crop lenses will also work with the a7, so let's do a little mix and match. This is the full frame 24 to 70 at 70 millimeters. Then with the APS-C on, which in addition to adding the crop reduces the resolution of the saved image to 10 megapixels. Here's the crop 16 to 70 lens at 70 with APS-C on or auto and off with some vignetting. Zoom out to 16 millimeters to see the full vignette, although this is now a 24 megapixel image. The same effects occur with video, but as video's 1920 by 1080's 2 megapixel resolution is lower anyway, there's no change in resolution for APS-C mode, which does suggest the interesting ability to slightly extend the zoom lens by using the APS-C mode. The 70 to 200. F4 throughout the range, closest to F22, filter diameter 72 millimeters, 840 grams, as it's heavier than the camera, it comes with a tripod mount. This is an excellent lens for video, smooth zoom travel with no iris adjustments or focus disruptions as you move in or out. Set the focus manually for a scene and it holds, although the closest focus distance does vary as you zoom in. The on-lens controls for focus mode, focus distance, and stabilization override the camera menu settings. There are two stabilization modes. Two stabilizes pans only. There are focus hold buttons. Best for last, the 35mm f1.4. 630 grams, filter diameter 72 millimeters. You saw this in the black and white images earlier. Sharp and detailed with a very narrow depth of field. I've posted more images on Flickr than I was able to include here. Lovely bouquet. Unbelievable in low light. I was truly surprised. More in a minute. I have to give Sony full credit for these lenses. They're solid and well made. Grip rings are nice and grippy with the right amount of friction and slip. The 70 to 200 adjusts focal length internally. The 24 to 70 moves cleanly in and out, no retrograde action. Manual zoom with less than a quarter turn from tight to wide, no need to move my fingers while zooming. While choosing photos to include in the video, I was pleased and impressed by the extraordinary detail and clarity. I cropped these duck images and they're still crisp. Color intensity is remarkable, full reds without oversaturation. This swan isn't overexposed, but adjusting highlights from the RAW file yielded feather detail I hadn't expected. The a7 II has five axes of stabilization. So that's horizontal, vertical, pitch, yaw, and roll. For video, I did a lot of handheld shooting. I was very pleased with the footage. I handheld some interviews and shot at a parade with impressive results, particularly as I wasn't using a shoulder brace. For stills, with the 28mm lens using the viewfinder, I can handhold about 125th and have about 3 quarters of my shots be steady enough to use with stabilization off. This lens doesn't have optical stabilization built in, so it's all on the camera. Of course, if the lens does, like the 24-70, it leverages both systems. There are also manual settings for other lenses based on focal length. So good flexibility and support for both standard and stabilized lenses. 
With stabilization on, I was able to reduce the shutter to half a second and still get about 80% of my images, which means I can handhold blurred pedestrians against a still background. And that's an increase of over three stops. Solid feature. Nicely implemented. Good improvement over the previous generation. You can see the stabilization in the viewfinder and LCD. I'm handholding with stabilization off and now on, making it much easier to get focus. There are two burst speeds. The slow speed, just short of three images per second, just keeps on going. I quit before it did after a minute with 170 images. At high speed, I got 85 JPEGs in 17 seconds, about five per second, before filling the buffer and slowing to about half that rate. RAW shoots at the same rate, but fills the buffer in about six seconds before slowing to a little better than one per second, and the autofocus keeps up. Buffer takes about 15 seconds to clear. If you want high speed and endurance, switch to APS-C mode, which also exhausted my patience. I stopped after a minute. Burst speed is fastest with manual focus and exposure. Sony's menu system has remained consistent across several models, and I'm finding the two-level page layout familiar and easy to use. I just do not understand the position of the menu button on the left side of the viewfinder. In navigation, menu is also the back button. This placement means you'll need both hands to navigate. So awkward, usability fail. The play button or the delete button should be over there, not menu, it needs to be close to the navigation circle. More frustrating, it's not even an option for the custom buttons. I'd move it to C4 if it was. Maybe we could have a firmware upgrade to address that. Urgh. The easier to access FN button brings up a customizable menu of 12 controls. I set these to the settings you see here. There are some features that you're best to leave on the function menu, like shooting mode unless you never intend to switch between the two flavors of auto. I recommend that you do customize, because there are some features only available by assigning to a custom button, like eye focus. It's not accessible in any other way. I put it on C1. Uh, note that it only works if a face is detected. The A7 II can be kitted up with the battery grip that holds two batteries, and this top-of-the-line Sony flash. You'll find more information about both in my separate review of accessories for the A7 series. Most brands provide more playback functionality than Sony provides here. There's no crop, red eye removal, or raw convert. It's not that I miss them, but you might. There is a slideshow function. The A7 II also has all the Sony features like great panorama, Sony's still the best in class, up to 12,000 by 2,000 pixels seamlessly stitched in camera. Scene modes selected by turning the rear dial, watch the upper left. If you need more information to select one, use scene select in the menu or turn the mode dial guide on. Set up page two. This provides assistance for both the mode dial and secondary settings like scene mode and video mode, but makes switching a little more cumbersome. 13 creative style settings, color adjustments for specific image types, and six more style box versions to provide personalized fine tuning. To access the effects, first switch from RAW to JPEG. There are 13 picture effects, many of which have options and settings to customize the effect. Watercolor and HDR painting are my favorites. My sole complaint here is that you can only shoot JPEG for these. Why doesn't the camera save an unadulterated RAW version as well? And these are gimmicky, but devoting an afternoon to shooting with watercolor illustration and HDR painting modes yielded some interesting images. Not that Topaz Simplify can't do the same once the images are on your computer. There are also downloadable apps, a growing collection of free and inexpensive apps from the Play Memories Camera App Store. And Wi-Fi, to transfer images to the smartphone app for uploading to social media. A basic remote control app is in the firmware, more advanced features in the Play Memories download version. Finally, there's a desktop app for use for remote shooting, very useful in studio situations. The A7 II is also a great video camera. I've posted a second video to describe those features. In addition to the basic information in the A7 II manual, Sony provides an online guide, which you'll need to help understand picture profiles and other advanced settings. But it's also helpful to understand how to use the various settings to achieve special effects. There's also a tablet app called Alpha Library with magazines and lessons. I found it to be interesting and useful. One of my minor gripes 
The stills playback display doesn't provide the actual file name, only the number in the current number of files on the card. For me, that makes it difficult to make notes for my images as I take them. And would it be possible to have a little, say, even 16 gigabytes of internal memory and make it super fast for burst? The a7 II is a near ideal multi-purpose camera, excelling at both stills and video, and I have no hesitation in recommending it on a quality or a technical level. It performs beautifully, focuses fast, it's great in low light. I got some terrific images and amazing footage. My minor issues are all about usability, from the awkward placement of the menu button to the exclusion of features from video mode. This camera needs a little more attention to detail.